So what's going on guys? Seems like I'm never gonna get a break from this rain. Anyways, we are looking at this Sandpiper fifth wheel today. A couple things I wanna point out about this fifth wheel are some innovative changes that Sandpiper made in 2018 that I think a lot of people who are looking at this brand would really appreciate. So hang tight, I'll be right back. So folks, this is the 377 FLIK from Forest River. This is a Sandpiper unit, and Sandpiper recently went through a lot of changes with the overall design of the Sandpiper models. The first and most notable one is now the use of a drop frame. So before in the past, the Sandpiper was just a solid straight frame. Now they're actually implementing the use of a drop frame. What that means for you is massive storage in the front basement area. So instead of the frame protruding up, it drops down now, and you can just see how much more storage you get. Shoot, you have enough storage to fit a full-size tire in its upright position. Just tons and tons of space. Plus, you can see that they've gone to much larger structural size aluminum framing. So these are three by one inch aluminum rails that run underneath this unit much, much larger in the past. Typically, they might be two inch. So this is a much more structurally sound unit in terms of the frame and the floor. They now utilize a much thicker door system as well. Typically, they were about a half inch thick. Now they're about an inch, maybe slightly thicker than an inch. Here's a quick glance at the drop frame system underneath this unit. And you can see where it connects to the main frame rail right here. Here's the bottom of one of the slides and you can see it utilizes a 12 inch I-beam frame all the way back behind the drop frame. The Sandpiper does have the LCI level up auto leveling system. Has nice looking aluminum wheels, but you know, I would like to see an upgraded equalizer in the center there. I think with all the upgrades they've made to this unit, it just kind of makes sense to have a better higher end equalizer there. Even if it's, you know, just an Equiflex system or the lower end Moride, you know, I think most fifth wheels should just come with that type of system now. One of the nice things that stands out is the high gloss gel coat on the side. So it has a nice finish to the side of the coach. It's not that flat fiberglass finish that you see on a lot of your fifth wheels. No window on the back door, though it does have aluminum steps, and it has four aluminum steps. And that's more representative of how high the RV sits, why they'd have the fourth step there. And another interesting note is that there's no window on the front door either. But again, four aluminum steps. Let's take a look inside this coach. Now walking up into this fifth wheel, it is very nice inside. This is a front living room, rear bedroom setup has a very large dining area. Now I know they only have two of the chairs out, the other two are probably in the closet in the master, but just the overall length of that dining room table is really massive. You could probably sit six people at this table if you had six chairs. Has day-night roller blinds. Real quick, since we're right here, this is a 2019 Sandpiper 377 FLIK. Has a $54,791 price tag. Not too bad considering this is a really, really desirable front living room setup. Take a look at the kitchen and all the counter space. So you have the island here, relatively small island. They put the sink in it. I would probably rather see the sink over there and make this a dedicated island. You have countertop space right here. You have nice cabinets above with glass, all stainless steel appliances, residential LG refrigerator. I really like this area here also. A lot of countertop space, nice hutch, plus you have some more countertop space above it, and you have some more storage right there as well. Let's take a look at this, what appears to be a large pantry. Oh yeah, this is a really nice pantry. So these are incredibly deep. I do wish they would have the ability to change the height of each shelf, that way you can kind of position it better, because I don't think you're ever really gonna have anything that's 14, 15 inches tall in here but then you have nice pull-out drawers below. Again, more drawers and cabinet space. This is a nice coach. Let's go up into the living area. One thing I've noticed, very little carpet in this unit. Just a little bit up here. There's some underneath the 
dining room table area, but just not a lot of carpet, which is nice. Easier to keep clean. So you're going to have your theater seats here. You're going to have a fold-out bed here. And then you're also going to have another fold-out bed here, which makes this into essentially a large bed area if you have a lot of kids or guests or people staying over. Lots of cabinetry. Nice 50-inch TV up front. Your real nice wide fireplace. And your soundbar entertainment system, along with DVD right there. Has a Coleman mock air conditioning system up front that is ducted through the unit. Now moving back towards the bedroom, you have your thermostat to control the front AC. Going into the master bath. This is a nice bathroom area. And in typical Sandpiper fashion, they put this kind of two-tone shower kit in here. So the top portion is a darker tone than the bottom tub area. Lots of shelving for towels, toiletries, and accessories. Has a nice porcelain toilet. A lot of countertop space here in the bathroom. Very nice vanity area. The mirror is huge. I do think it would make sense if they would have dropped it down slightly because for those people who aren't eight feet tall, they probably also want to use the mirror and having it drop down maybe another six inches would have been, I think, helpful for those who are a little shorter in stature. Overall though, a lot of space in the bathroom. Now let's go into the master bedroom area. Now this is what you call a master bedroom. Look at the space in here. This is just massive. If you look at the space between this dresser at the end and the bed, you're probably looking almost four feet. Plus you have a dedicated spot for your TV. I open the door to get a little bit of light in here. You have a really nice area here with your washer and dryer connection, so you can put a full stackable washer and dryer unit in this closet area, or just use it as a closet if you don't have washer and dryer. Plus you have cabinets above. You have all of these drawers here. One of the nice things about this rear bedroom layout with the front living room is just how massive of a master bedroom area it gives you. Lots of cabinets. You have a dedicated AC unit back here as well, along with a thermostat. It's also ducted from the front unit. King size bed with plenty of space to get around it on both sides. You have a little nightstand area right there, some shelving units right here. Overall, just a really nice space. I love the space that they put here. And the reason why you have so much space here is because the slide is a full size, is because the slide is a full size slide. So it goes out a full three feet which gives you three additional feet here on top of probably the one foot that you would have normally. So almost four feet of space here, which is really nice. Of course, typical with all RVs, you have under bed storage and there are your two chairs for the dinette area up front. This coach has five slides. So three on this side and two on the opposite side. Again, I'm really surprised that there isn't an upgraded equalizer. Now on the back bedroom slide, there's this little hatch that flips up and it actually takes you directly to your under bed storage, which is kind of cool. Easier access for your chairs if you wanna drag them out and take them all the way around to the front. But it's kind of interesting that you can access your under bed storage from the back hatch here. And this is gonna be your traditional uh, door because it's only about a half inch thick. This coach does utilize LED lighting throughout, plus it is pre-wired for a Furion backup camera. There's no hitch assembly on this unit or bicycle rack, but you could probably add one. The bumper seems to be made from a little bit thicker steel too. If you were gonna add something, I would still recommend that you have it welded or bolted directly to the I-beam frame. Now let's take a quick look at the numbers on this unit. This has a gross vehicle weight rating of 15,500 pounds. It has a cargo capacity of 3,377 pounds. Utilizes 7,000 pound Dexter axles and 235-85-16 F-rated tires. So they have a good rating to the tire even though they're a cheaper tire and you'd still probably want to get rid of them, swap them for new tires after five to 10,000 miles max. 
Guys, with a fifth wheel this size, you could probably tow it with a one-ton single rear wheel truck if you had the correct tow rating. However, I would recommend a dually for something this large. It's got an incredibly tall profile to it. It's almost a straight profile going back. There's just a little dip at the very back there. But this unit is relatively heavy, very long, and a tall profile. Definitely something I would recommend for a dually pickup truck. Doesn't matter whether it's a Ram, GM, or Ford. You should be able to tow it just fine with any of your newer dualies. If you're thinking of RAM, you would definitely want to make sure you get the right gear ratio as well as the correct engine transmission setup to give you the horsepower, torque, and towing numbers to tow something this large. Anyways guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.